Hello, I am Apec Mule, and today I am going to have a discussion with world-renowned economist Dr. Ravi Batra, and hear his views on the latest, the recent economic and political developments that are happening here in the United States because of the unexpected election of President-elect Donald Trump. I thank Desi Plaza for giving us this platform to share our views. Uh, since 1960s, uh, a group of elite economists meet every year in January and they offer their forecasts for the rest of the year. This meeting is arranged by the American Economic Association and a large number of economists from all over the world are present at this event. This year the meeting was held in Chicago and Professor Batra uh, was present uh, at this meeting to to, pre to present his paper on what really causes poverty. The, these, a number of elite economists, including the Nobel laureates, were very critical of President-elect Donald Trump's economic policies. Some argued that it would lead to a recession, others were afraid of trade warfare and risks to global economy. The latest, the cover story of the latest issue of the Time magazine calls, th calls this election of President-elect Donald Trump to be a latest source of ground zero uncertainty and turmoil. So you see we are living now in very, very interesting times of economic and political uncertainty. So it is a perfect time for me to get this, uh, make the people understand what's going on. And that's why I have invited today Dr. Batra to Desi Plaza studio to get this interview. So I'm Apec Mule. If you have been following me, I do write articles uh, frequently on economic and economics on several uh, reputed blogs and publications like in this magazines. I also have my own personal blog, apecmule.com. Uh, I have authored three books uh, on macroeconomics in three years. Uh, and one of my book is entitled Mass Capitalism. Today, Dr. Batra is over here in our studio and he is going to comment on all the barrage of criticism that president uh, elect, uh, that all have been do barrage of criticism against president elect Donald Trump's policies and that, he, that we have seen in 2016, but still it has resulted into a victory of Trump. And uh, to tell you something about uh, Dr. Batra, uh, he's a world famous uh, economist from Southern Methodist University in Dallas. And he has made a great career out of making really uncanny economic forecasts. He started making predictions way back in 1978 when he wrote his book, The Downfall of Capitalism and Communism, which predicted that the, there the fall of predicted a fall of the Soviet communism by the end of the century in 78 okay and he also predicted that monopoly capitalism would go away around 2010 actually no one took this book seriously until when the Berlin fall fell uh, in 1989 Berlin wall fell in 1989 and then eventually Soviet Union also collapsed and the the uh, the end of the fall of the Soviet communism was so swift and stunning uh, that uh, Italian Senate also offered Dr. Batra with a medal of honor uh, for his accuracy in his predictions. Professor Batra later updated his books and he in 2006 he released a book entitled The New Golden Age. I have this book over here, A New Golden Age, A Coming Revolution Against Political Uncertainty and an Economic Chaos. The forecasts made in this book were also breathtaking as before. And he, way, he put forward several forecasts uh, about revolutions coming in the United States in 2009 and again in 2016. Uh, and as with his earlier work, it was his books were a mixture of history and economics. Uh, Batra predicted a great recession starting in 2008. And, uh, uh, this has to do with, and he also said that uh, the major cause would be the, the rising concentration of wealth and the rising price of the oil. And we did see that the price of the oil did skyrocket to up to $147 per barrel. But later we saw for, uh, collapse. He also, he also foresaw collapse of the same and oil price did fall after 2012. Regarding politics, he predicted a revolution in 2009 and then again 2016. And now since so many of his forecasts have come true, I think he is just the right person for me to ask what can we expect at this point of time 
with so much uncertainty and so much turmoil that we're expecting that the, the, the economists around the world are forecasting. So what, let, let, what is exa exactly what, what we can expect in the near future? So this is a, uh, this is a discussion with Professor Batra to exactly get his views on what's happening now. Dr. Batra, thank you very much for coming here again. And I uh, have a lot of questions for you. Uh, my first question to you is that, why are the elite economists so critical of Mr. Trump? You know, they have denounced his ideas throughout last year. I remember when we had done uh, one last previous interview, career politicians and fury in America right. here. We did see a lot of criticism still, till the end of the last day of the election, we are not sure whether Trump is actually going to win. You know, there was so much media bias we saw and so much. And so why are, why are the elite economists so critical of his ideas? And, but we'd still see that in spite of all that, uh, he still won and it was a stunning upset for these economists. And, um, and I seem, it seems they're not forgiven him uh, you know, in spite of his victory. So what, 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 what happened? in 2016. Yeah, this is a good question to ask. Why did Mr. Trump win? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, let me start out by thanking you for having me here. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, why did he win? Even though hardly anybody expected him, even though the entire media was against him, in fact, the entire, almost the entire world was yeah, yeah, against absolutely. him. Yeah. Well, he won because of the failure of existing economic theory. Okay. The economists simply just do, don't understand what creates prosperity, what creates poverty. They live in their own ivory tower and, and they think everything is hunky-dory, everything is fine because they themselves are very rich. The media personnel are also very rich themselves. They have seen their incomes skyrocket since 2010, mm -hmm. while the poor have been getting poorer. Okay. So, I perhaps was maybe among a handful of people who felt that uh, Mr. Trump would actually win. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. in, in, in fact, <laughs> there's an interesting story behind it. My son works in Chicago itself right now, and ab almost uh, about a week before the election, was to occur, I think it was November 8th. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He said, I want to put a wager, mm -hmm. a small bet on okay. who is going to win. Okay. And he said, you tell me, are you still sure that Mr. Trump is going to win? Okay. He asked me that. I said, look, I make forecasts and then I don't really change them okay. until I'm proved wrong. Okay. Okay. So I told him, look, uh, I am, in spite of all the media opposition to him, in spite of all the uh, tapes that have come out against Mr. Mr. Trump, I still think, I'm 95% sure that he is going to win. You see, why? Why, do you, why are you so uh, uh, sure about it? I said, here is what I, here's my reason. Every election is normally decided by the economy, the state of the economy. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the state of the economy is how people feel. Now how, not how the media feels, or not how the economists feel, right. but how the public feels, because they are the ones who are going to decide. They are the ones who are going to elect the president. Okay. And now the media people have seen their salaries double and triple since 2010. The economists have gotten very rich. They get a lot of campaign, a uh, lot of grant money right. from the rich corporations. Mm -hmm. So for them, everything is fine. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But look at the poor people. They are Many of them have gotten their jobs back. But what these elite don't know is that more than 60% of Americans have just $500 right. in their savings account. Just $500 in their more savings account. More than 60%? More than 60%. <laughs> and the media people also don't know that almost half the retirees have only $50,000 in their pension funds. Okay. Just, just imagine living the rest of your life on, on social 50, security dollars. and just fifty thousand dollars in in your savings account. Then the media people also don't know that as many as, uh, and this is 2016. You know, uh -huh. I'm talking about it. even now as many as fifty million Americans okay. go partially hungry every day. 
They don't know that. Huh. All they see is their old pockets are full, and they know that Mr. Trump has had some problems in the past, and they, they, these problems have come on on the tape. They think that he's going to lose. But I am sure he will win because in the end, people are going to say, what is in it for me in Mrs. Clinton's election? She's going <coughs> to do exactly what has been going on for the last 40 years. Okay. Okay. President Obama did not change things much. He, although there was a great promise in his election, he didn't change things much. Mm -hmm. Well, he, he, he of course talks about 8 million jobs he has created since 2010. And recovery of the economy. And, and he says, well, it's, it's, it should be great for the people, should be, should be, should be uh, thankful to him. Uh -huh. And of course, they should be thankful to him because Mr. George Bush has totally destroyed the economy. Okay. Okay. But look what look at what cost. Okay. To create those eight million jobs, uh -huh. Mr. Obama has added eight trillion dollars to federal debt. debt. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Divide eight trillion by eight million, that means he has you have spent one, one million dollars to create one job <laughs> that pays only fifty thousand dollars a year. This is a joke. <laughs> this is a joke. You spent one million dollars to create a job that spends fifty million, fifty thousand. That gives you fifty thousand dollars on average per year. So where is the money gone? So exactly, that's the question <laughs> everybody wants to know. Where is the money gone? Well, it has gone to the, into the pockets of the top one percent of the public. So that includes even some of those economists. Well, that well, perhaps uh, I'm so not so sure so if they are so in the top one percent. In the top, yeah, some of them are in the top one percent of, of the richest people. So. So this money has gone there uh -huh. and unfortunately the government doesn't even know that they are th themselves making the rich richer mm -hmm. while the poor don't have enough money even to feed their hungry. <laughs> they think well jobs are back even though at lower wages everything is fine. No it's not fine and Mr. Trump knows that. Mm -hmm. He has been telling the people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What is the real cause of their poverty? Mm -hmm. What's the real cause of their uh, misery? And he's right. It's free trade and outsourcing. And, and, and by the way, I had written a book in as far back in 1993. Myth of free trade. The myth, myth of, of free myth trade. Of free yeah, I've read trade. that. Yeah, I've read that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In that book, I had predicted that manufacturing is going to die inside the U.S. because mm -hmm. of all this trade with low-wage countries. Yeah. Yeah. Manufacturing is going to die and that will, that means the poverty, the poor will suffer the most because the poor people have high level of productivity in manufacturing industries. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. See, their productivity is high in manufacturing industries and when manufacturing vanishes, their Power poverty is going to rocket. Right. Right. And I had written that in 1993, so I said the best thing would be for the United States to reimpose tariffs. Okay. Or find a way to eliminate the trade deficit so that manufacturing survives and prospers in the U.S. Right. But they didn't do that, and now uh, we yeah. are in this such a such a such a mess. Yeah. And but and but Mr. Pr Trump is, is is a businessman. He knows trade deficits. He knows. <laughs> yeah. He knows how businesses prosper. Right. Right. Through this trade deficit, yeah, so yeah, American yeah. rich people are, are getting yeah, richer. Yeah, many said that he has his ties made in Mexico. He has, you know, that also was some That's of the right. people had said that. So, <coughs> the economists in Chicago mm -hmm. criticized Trump Trumponomics. Let's call it Trumponomics. Right, right. Trumponomics, because they feel that it's going to cause trade warfare with China, or. Uh, 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 American companies won't be able to compete with the rest of the world. Right. But the question is, why do you need to compete with the rest of the world when so much demand is here? Yeah. When there is, people are rich here, but I mean, there used to be. Used to be rich. The no, no rest more. of the world wants to sell here, so why do you want to want sell elsewhere in the world? And, and normally I give this example, you know, we live in Dallas and there is a community called, there is a community, Oak, Oak Cliff. Oak Cliff is very poor part of Dallas. We, 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 will, we will talk more. I would like to hear more about that Oak Cliff, what you're talking about. We're just coming to a short commercial break. Okay. And then I would like to hear more about your views on Trumponomics on trial right. and Oak Cliff, what you're talking okay. about. So uh, we'll, we'll be back after a short commercial break. Uh, please stay tuned and we'll have more questions for Dr. Batra. Thank you very much. <laughs> 